Good afternoon, I'm Sam Bonington and welcome to Winchester News Online. On today's programme, Star of the South, Craig David, is returning home this autumn to play in one of the region's iconic venues. Being able to go out there and do the live shows and performances are really what hone you as an artist. Hey! Hey! Protests in Hampshire over Brexit and Donald Trump are in full swing. I don't know, it's like a nightmare. Um... Pause for thought as a cafe with a difference opens. Just seeing it all come into reality is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. With 1.5 million singles and a MOBO award, Craig David has certainly made an impact on the music industry. But now the R&B sensation is coming back to where it all started. Julie Lee fills us in. He's one of the biggest stars ever to come out of Southampton. And now he's back for a huge homecoming show. Craig David will play at Aegeus Ball in September. The singer has returned with his chart-topping album following my intuition. 16 years after hitting number one with his debut. If you could tell yourself something as a young person growing up in Southampton, trying to break into the music industry, what would you say to yourself you know, now that everything's happened? I would say as a 16 year old kid back in the day when I was doing I didn't know when I was telling my friends, I'm not coming out today to go raving with you, I want to finish this song. What was pulling me to stay indoors? But that passion ended up being filmed me in seven days, rewind, walking away. So something was guiding me, it was like a compass was there. The show on the 1st of September will round off a sold out UK tour. Craig believes that live shows are where he can shine best. Being able to go out there and do the live shows and performances are really what hone you as an artist. So it's, it's using both of them to their, to their best ability. But I found that live is what's given me a 16 year career and ultimately the song. The news is causing a buzz in Southampton. I really love his songs. I liked him very much when he first came. Uh, and yeah, when I heard he was from here, I was like, oh, that's, that's great. I know a few people would be excited to see him, so <laughs> but I'm not a fan myself. This September, D. Craig David is coming home to play at this arena in Southampton. The Aegeus Ball has a capacity of 15,000 people and will be the biggest gig he has headlined in his hometown. This is Julie Lee, Winchester News Online. Picnics and protests were two of the ways in which the people of Hampshire stood up for migrants in the UK. Many cities took to the streets to unite against racism and protests against President Trump. Migrants, Trump and strong protests. That was the agenda for today's One Day Without Us campaign. Protests took place across the UK, but in Southampton, people sang and shouted whilst picnics, blankets and flags were on the menu for Winchester. I have done voluntary work in this country. I was, or I still am actually, with the Winchester Scouts. So I'm contributing something without even getting anything for it. And this whole thing with uh, the referendum and some comments I got from some people afterwards made me feel so down that I actually had to give up my uh, public facing activities with them because I just couldn't face the idea that there would be parents who actually want me secretly gone from this country. Stand Up To Racism used the campaign to protest against President Donald Trump's state visit. I would hate to see any of my uh, fellow lecturers at the University of Winchester feel unwelcome, feel uh, in any way victimised or, or uh, estranged or forced out by current um, developments both in Europe and in the USA. Trump, I don't know, he's like a nightmare. Um, I still can't believe it really. I still can't believe it. Whenever I see him on television I just think, can this be true? You know, this man is just a, 
grotesque, like a spitting image puppet, you know, that's there, it doesn't seem real. And what he says is just stream of consciousness, whatever he, how can this man be the leader of the free world? It's just bizarre, absolutely bizarre, but it's dangerous. The crowds are now dispersed here at the Civic Centre in Southampton, but the protesters' energies were high as they dumped Trump on this day of the One Day Without Us campaign. The protests continue in London and across the UK, and now the people just need to wait and find out whether or not Trump will be allowed his state visit. This is Jennifer Cray Marchbank, Winchester News Online. The Hive Ferry is a valuable transport link for many people. It's a direct link from Southampton to Hive. The alternative is to drive 10 miles on busy roads. But lately, the service has come under threat. Our reporter Shahat Kalra went to investigate. Controversy and uncertainty has surrounded the Hythe Ferry and its pier for months. The decreasing number of passengers and a lack of investment has created issues for the owners who want to sell it and are now looking for buyers. To keep the ferry going in the meantime, Hampshire County Council has provided short-term funding so it can stay afloat. The service needs investment and it needs renewal. And we hope that recent news about a possible change of ownership is going to lead to the investment that's required to give it a sustainable future. It's much more than just a link for commuters. The ferry and pier have a long history. There's been a ferry here for 138 years and the train service that connects with it is 100 years old this year. The Southampton Hythe ferry will be maintained, renewed and given a new opportunity and, and the community can really engage uh, with the history and the heritage that is uh, Hythe Pier. The Hythe Ferry Pier and train service has been around for over a century and is a crucial part of the residents' daily lives. A change in ownership may bring about some confusion, however residents have hope. This is Chad Caldra with Winchester News Online. Preparations in Winchester are well underway for one of the most significant events on the LGBT calendar. Victoria Quinn has more. With its bright colours and the sound of celebration, this is the unmistakable sight of Pride. Hampshire Pride is an annual event now, this is the third Hampshire Pride, where people from across Hampshire can come together and celebrate diversity essentially. In the last few weeks it's got a bit, bit stressful, we've all sort of been putting all lots of hours outside of our, our usual day jobs because we're all volunteers and there's just a lot of prep going but I think we're pretty much there, it's just that those last few nervous days before it actually sets off. The University of Winchester will for the third time host the start of the event. So obviously on Saturday it's going to be just a celebration of the diversity we have on campus, um, especially people of different sexualities, different gender identities. I remember being in the last two Pride parades that people are really happy to see that, that, that we are so proactive in showing that we are proud to be who we are and that Winchester is so exceptional, especially as a university. Everyone's really excited for this year. We have um, a street party going on, the parade is going to be bigger than last year, and we also have a bigger after party at the night as well. The Pride Parade finishes here at the Winchester Guild Hall this Saturday in a day of celebration promoting equality amongst all. Victoria Quinn, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Parking in Winchester can be tricky at the best of times and in many parts of the city you need a parking permit. The problem of finding a space though is getting worse and the City Council is considering extending the parking permit scheme to more areas. That's a controversial move as Bethany Waring reports. Parking in Opastamo is free for anyone to use. Other areas nearby you have to have a permit to park but that might soon be the case here too. The council is asking residents here if they want to introduce parking restrictions to ease congestion, but it's meeting some resistance. I've never had a problem with like parking here before and I really don't think that they're any use to us. I mean, we've only got one car so we would only need to buy one permit, but to be honest, that one permit we really don't need. Areas of lower summer already require permits and the proposal would see those areas extended. 
absolutely is a problem. It's been a problem for many years, and over the years we've had some permit restrictions put in. For example, Lower Stamwells had it in 2012. But the trouble is, when you put lower restrictions in, parking restrictions in, then it, what it does, it moves the problem elsewhere. And what we're experiencing mid to upper Stamwell are having some real parking issues at this moment in time. Obviously, you get the sort of people saying, why should I pay for a permit to park outside my house situation? But clearly, there is a, a problem in Stanmore. One of the main factors in the debate is the student population in Stanmore. The problem has been inherited from Sparkford Road, which saw a large amount of university students parking until permits were introduced. The student union told us the university tries to do all it can, but they would like to work with the council to help resolve the issue. It's not yet known whether residents here will soon have to pay to park outside their own homes. One thing that is for sure is that whether permits are accepted here or not, the parking problems in Winchester aren't going to be resolved overnight. Bethany Waring, Winchester News Online. And in other council news, Hampshire taxpayers could face an increase of nearly 5% in the next financial year. As the plans to save money affect councils nationwide, most counties are facing tax increases. Hampshire Council leader Roy Perry said they owe it to residents to keep tax under tight control. For the third year, Winchester City Council have teamed up with the university to renovate their area. The project is designed to get long-term residents and students to work together as a community. Danielle Condal went to investigate. Volunteers from both the local community and university have teamed up to renovate Cromwell Park today. A local councillor stated that it was the largest group he has seen in the three years that he has been running. The Winchester City Council owns this area of land and it's very important to us because all our open spaces are used by local people. They're a great place to come and relax, to get some exercise, to have some sport. And we're trying to invest both our time and money in making sure these open spaces remain a really great place for people to be. Of course, I think the more things the students can get involved in, the better. We do a, a few programmes like tomorrow we have to big tidy up with people from the local community as well, so it just keeps it going and keeps us building a better and stronger relationship. But before the hard work could begin, it's time for a group photo. Bringing together the local community here in Stanmore with the students that also live here, action days are becoming more popular each year. Danielle Condell, Winchester News Online, Winchester. The wait is finally over after months of hard work and fundraising including a £25,000 campaign in November, a new cat cafe in Bournemouth has finally opened its paws for business. Amber Lovell sent this report. When the ivories are tickled, they're normally tickled by people, not paws. But that's not the case here at Paws Cat Cafe. Aside from specialising in vegan foods, the cafe offers a unique dining experience, and that is the experience of dining with cats. It feels amazing to finally be open. It's been such a long process and I, just seeing it all come into reality is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted and all my worries have kind of faded away. The cafe, of which is home to seven rescue cats, houses the cats in their own individual bedrooms. This is Pumpkin. He was rescued alongside his brother Max, both of whom have fed human food, which can have catastrophic impacts on the cat. I've heard about them popping up in London and other places and the idea that you can go play with cats in the middle of your work day and, yeah, I couldn't really say no to that. Rebecca was so excited that she decided to give us her best meal. <laughs> and the craze for the cat cafe has moved 6,000 miles from Taiwan all the way to Bournemouth. Amber Lovell and a pumpkin, Winchester News Online, Bournemouth. That's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching.